Hello everyone. How are all of you doing? I almost said happy Friday, but it is Thursday. <laughs> it feels like Friday. Um, just getting things loaded on my page so I can see if we're actually live and how it looks to you guys. If you're here, say hello and just let me know that you're there. I'll try to keep an eye for a minute and see if anybody says hello. I can see someone's there. I just can't see who just yet. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> I can see your name there. It'll be out of my view in just a moment. So um, again, if you're there, just say hi. This is what I'll be making for you guys. And Michelle, did you guess what was going to be on this one? I had a laugh when I used that one there. I'm sure you probably guessed which one it would be. Before we get into making that, I will just give you guys a reminder of the retiring products promotion that I have on. I am going to try also to catch up on the draws from the last lives. When the retiring list hit, it was kind of chaotic trying to get everything ready among unpacking things and trying to set things up here again. But um, I will try to do those either tonight or tomorrow so that we can catch up on those and then there will be a new draw. Um, I won't actually send out this card for today's draw because I actually need it. I need this one and then the one I'm going to make I actually need as well. So I may do something with pre-order products because if you saw my stories, I have mine. I have received my catalog and I have received my pre-order. So maybe I will even share some pre-order stuff with you guys. Comment and let me know if you would like to see. Hi everyone. Um, I think I'm allowed to share it as long as it's in my hands, I can show a sneak peek. So if you guys would like to see that, comment and let me know. So the promotion that I still have going on is, there's two actually. So the birthday one is still open. So that one was my 15 year anniversary. There's a host code for that. They're both on my page. So if you are interested in taking part in the birthday class, you can still do that. It's the same offer basically. If you place a $65 order, you'll get a free gift. With a $100 order, you get the free gift and a free class. So there is the same one pertaining to the last chance list and then another one, sorry, the last chance one is this host code. And then if you're interested in the birthday one, it's a different host code and it's on the graphic for my birthday promotion that's on my page. I'll probably share that one last time just so that you guys know when it's open until before I close it off and finalize that list. Yeah, you want a sneak peek. Okay. <laughs> so this one here is for the the last chance list. We're going to be using a bunch of stuff off of that today. If you guys have questions on whether or not something has sold out from the last chance list, let me know. And um, I have marked up my catalog as of last night what had sold out already. These things had not as of last night, so I hope they haven't yet. But um, I needed a birthday card for today and I also wanted to be able to show you guys some of the retiring products. So there's quite a bit on here and we will get started. So I'll show this a little closer first and then Michelle, you'll just have to let me know if you had guessed what the product that I would be using on it was. Um, this one features the Abigail Rose Suite. And I will just quickly open up a catalog and show you guys that page. So this is from the Still Current annual catalog. And it is retiring. Okay, so this is the Abigail Rose Suite. So it comes with there's the suite or there's the separates. So it comes with this really pretty DSP. I'm going to bring mine over here so you guys can see it. And then there's also this stamp set and then all of these really pretty dies. I didn't use the ribbon, but I used just twine on mine. And then I paired it together with the Alphabet a la mode dies from the spring catalog. And I also paired it with the fancy frames dies that are also retiring. I can't believe these are retiring. They just came out last year. I remember making a sneak peek card for you guys with these here. So it is 
this is the complete set. I've actually pre die cut this element so it can go back on here, but you get all of these nice frames and then these corners. That one is actually on sale. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna get you guys to hold just a second and I'll grab my marked up catalog so I can tell you the price. very smart of me to come without my catalog sorry about that okay so the fancy frames they are fabulous frames sorry they are 40% off down to 2580 and how the one works that I have used is you get the frame as one layer like this and it actually cuts the center out separately so you can see that I kind of changed my mind with how I was going with this one originally I had stamped on the insert and um, decided to go a different way but it does cut these out as separates for you so you can interchange if you want to put a different color inside but that is one of the sets that is on clearance and I will just tell you the price of the Abigail Rose Suite as well so the DSP is on sale for 10% off the ribbon is 50% off and the dies are actually 30% off down to $32.90 and the stamp set is regular price. So that in the English version anyway, the French one is 2720. So that's the suite I'm using today. And I will show you this really pretty DSP. We're using just a couple of patterns of it. So I wanted to show you guys this. I love this one as well. And I think these coordinate with the dies. So this is all of the DSP. And this one, coordinates I believe with this really big die here so you would be able to die cut all of those elements at once haven't tried it yet but it looks like it would be fun this is also one of my favorites as you can see I used it on the project this one is another favorite I think that one's gorgeous I love this one so I'm happy that I don't love the other side and then this one here so that is the DSP. I actually ordered more of it because I knew I wanted to use this and I love this Smoky Slate DSP. So I've got another package in my, I believe it's in the box that's here. But anyway, so we will get started. If you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, everybody says yes to the sneak peeks. Awesome, okay. So I'll show you guys at the, those at the end. I hope that's okay. We'll make the card first and then we'll do that part. So I have the Smoky Slate card base. You could do this if you were going to replicate a similar card, you could do this in any color. If you guys wish to share too, just share and then comment that you did and I will still do a draw for sharing and then I'll still post this project after and you can do a creative challenge with me too and follow the sketch to be entered in a draw for that. And Jan, I actually still have to post your card for you in the previous challenge. I haven't done that draw yet. So that's part of the ones I'm going to catch up on. Anyhow, so we have a four and a quarter by 11. I almost said four. And then I did do the insert for this one. I don't always, but I did remember to do that this time. So I have a four by five and a quarter insert. And then I used a strip of that coordinating DSP. It is five and a quarter by three quarters of an inch. I cut the DSP to match the size of the insert. It's four by five and a quarter. And remember to turn that around this way. I have a scrap for my stamping. And then this is from the coordinating dies. So this one would die cut a fancy outline, but I chose to not pop out the negative spaces so that they would just stay in there and make it kind of like a quilted look. So I have that. And then a strip. This is the one, Michelle, from my hand-pinned petals set of dies that I use all the time. So I'll tell you guys what that paper is as well. So I cut the scallop border. I have a strip of the Smoky Slate DSP. That's three quarters. I'll trim it down to by five and a quarter. This is from the color collection. So it's from the Neutrals DSP. I think they're still available. I don't think they sold out, but they are being reconfigured, so those will retire as well. The glittery 
um, scallop border and the flower is from the gold and rose gold metallic specialty paper. Sandy, I think it was you that asked about this when I did a rainbow card with it quite a while back. Yes, Marsha, this is today's video. Um, and so it's retiring as well. I don't think it's sold out and I don't think I ordered myself more of it and now I'm kicking myself because of course I went and started using it and I only have a few sheets left now. I'm just checking the price of that. It is 30% off down to $4.90 and you get four sheets of each color. So I'm going to have to be placing another order and adding some of this for myself. And somebody remind me at the end of the video that I said I need to get more of this. But um, this color is so, so pretty. And I, I think it goes great with this, um, with this DSP. And then the last item I used is the Elegant Faceted Gems. They are also retiring. And they are on sale for, they're 60% off down to 410. That is an incredible price. These are the ones I use all the time because you get a row of white the rose of pink and the rose of clear. So I use the white and the clear on, like this is my go-to embellishment when I don't want just rhinestones. So these are a good staple for me anyway. So that's the supplies that I've got. And now we'll get started. I'm also gonna show you guys how I got this black die cut to be raised when they're so thin. So there's a little trick to that and I'm gonna show you guys how I did that. It looks like it's a little bit fuzzy. Is it fuzzy to you guys? Let me know if it's fuzzy. It might just be my end that I'm viewing on, but let me know if it looks terrible for you guys or if you can hear me. Okay, so we're gonna move this out of the way and I'll do this stamping here first and the die cuts. So I actually, it's hard to see this, it looks like it's very slow. Tell me how it's looking for you guys. I feel like it's awful. Hopefully not. Just make sure that we're actually charging. <laughs> if it happens to be that this does what it did the last time I went live and it cuts out, we just have to reach, like plug the phone back in. So hang in with me and I'll be right back if that happens, if the feed goes dead for a second. Okay, so I am going to just embossing buddy this gray piece here. And I'm also going to grab a black piece. So what I did was I actually inked up my stamp with Versamark and then I embossed in black powder. I originally was going to color the image and then I decided to just go simple because I do need to make multiples of this. I actually need two or three more. And that's why the version I'm making now will have different numbers and I'll actually be mailing it off to somebody. So that's Versamark. I did the embossing buddy on this piece here. I am going to stamp that. So I was saying that I originally planned to um, color it and when I had stamped it on here, I had stamped with Memento and I was going to color. And then I decided I wanted to try die cutting it because I really liked the DSP peeking through here. And I accidentally stamped in Versamark and then I thought, oh, well, I'll emboss that and see how it goes. So um, anyway, that's what led to going the simpler way because I knew I had to make multiples and um, I thought maybe I would blend some ink in there, but I decided I liked it just plain with the black on gray and the glossy image. So that is what I went with. Sometimes, especially if you have to make multiples, it's easier to go with the simple version. So if you are embossing, you want to brush that off, the excess off, before you heat emboss. It's not a huge deal with this one because I will die cut it, just in case. So excuse the heat gun, oopsie, throwing things here. I'm going to just heat this up quickly. I was actually quite surprised, a series of happy events. Yeah, it actually was. 
which set is the long scallop from? I will check, Janet, and actually I know it's on sale because I think it's down to $16. I was telling people it's worth getting that set just for that scalloped border. I almost feel like I should get a second one in case mine never has anything go wrong because it's, I use it all the time. This is kind of hard to see when it's embossed. funny part of it went um like flat looking as opposed to glossy but it'll do now I have the coordinating die so we'll just tape that down I'm surprised that this suite is actually retiring I did not expect that I thought this one because it only just came out last year I thought that this one would carry forward and I just love this DSP. Okay, so I will just be off camera for a second while I die cut this. If you guys can hear in the background, that is my pre-order box I'm stepping over. All right, so now we have this. And then I also need to stamp my greeting. So what you can do here is I have used, I'm gonna bring the stamp set in so you can see it. It doesn't have a TH for um, the, or the dies don't. The dies don't have a little TH or the ND or anything like that for if you need to put the, the age that somebody's turning. There isn't anything in these. These are the Alphabet Alamo dies out of the January to April catalog. So how I compromised for that was I stamped the happy birthday. I'm not going to put the birthday on here. I kind of like it just as happy 50th. Originally I was going to do happy 50th birthday. So I actually stamped two of this greeting. And so I used the happy from this one. I was going to use the birthday, like I said. So I just cut the TH out of the second one. And that was how I got the TH for here. So I'll just bring that a little closer so that you guys can see that. I'll post a photo after so you can see it up and close as well. But if you need a little TH, then you can grab it from just stamping a second version of your greeting. So I just need to stamp, actually don't even, I will, this one's not super crisp, so I'll still stamp one. And then that way you guys will get to see it as well, but that's the stamp set, I think it's just so pretty. Okay, so I'm going to again embossing buddy this, and then I'll use my Versamark. And I don't like to put the stickers on my stamps. How about you guys? Tell me what you guys do. Oh, sneaky, which part is the sneaky? Hi, Maria, and hi, everybody else that I've missed. Um, tell me the sneaky part, Michelle. <laughs> I think if I get a chance to, if anybody is, if you guys are not super tied up on Good Friday, I was thinking I would try and make a product, or a project with um, the sneak peek product and do a live tomorrow. Tell me what you guys think about that. The TH, yeah, I was like, sometimes I have moments where I impress myself. Sometimes I pull a David. I don't know if he's here watching, but I don't think he is today. Okay, so I will emboss this one. Actually, I need to get a little bit more on that letter P. I swept it off too much. There we go. That's better. I got a little too close. I, with our unpacking, I found my newer embossing tray. I knew it was somewhere. I knew I had it, but 
I also knew it got packed up. So I have unearthed it. Along with many other things. If you follow my stories at all, I posted a photo in my stories of the amount of cardstock, just the 8.5 by 11, that I was able to pull out of my retired stash for returning color. So that was exciting. All right, so we'll put these out of the way. So that's all the stamping that is involved. So I have what I need there. And I want to show you guys how I got the thick numbers in black and white. We don't have black, or sorry, just black is what I meant to say, evening or late afternoon for live is your vote. I don't like snickering, but I do it because I like to have them. Which do you like to have, Sandy? Let me know. Okay, um, what I was saying is I meant to say black, not black and white, but we don't have black foam. So what I did, I have it hiding here in my pile, is I actually used a corner of the sheet of my black Stampin' Dimensionals. I was thinking I should test out some white dimensionals and see if you could color the edge with blends or with your markers, but I haven't tried that yet. So I'm going to just use my trimmer and cut this off. I hope this isn't too much, this project here, making you guys wait with all these extra little steps but hopefully you guys enjoy the little tips and tricks so believe it or not i need a 75 so i am going to put i'll actually just put this whole piece down because i know i need more than one so this should give me enough to do a few of these so i'm doing this with the um, hexagon side face down that way i can pull up i'm actually going to go on this side here I can pull this up in one solid piece. Then of course a backing stuck there, wouldn't you know it, just because I went and said that. Oh. I, I wanna try to keep those face down. The ones that are face down, stuck down, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so. I'm not gonna be able to do them all at once. We're gonna go with just a corner. And I don't think I'm gonna get that backing off there, but we're gonna try to get it off. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna take my cardstock and I'm going to place it on the back of this Okay, and then I'm gonna close that back up and just, there we go. This worked a little better when I did this earlier. Okay, so my cardstock ends right here. So now I have some cardstock that is like a layer of black foam. I want to cut these ones off and I don't want to get my scissors all gunky. That's why I put that backing back down. All right, and then I'm going to trim this one down here. Ideally, that would have stayed flat there, but it didn't. So anyhow, now I will take my 75 and I'm putting it on the cardstock side. So the sticky side to the back, I am going to take the 75. I'm actually not gonna take the 75. I know I can fit um, this seven on here and I wanna make the most use out of these. I'm going to need a 10. So I'm going to do these. This isn't the one I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna run that through on there and I'm going to do a zero and a five because I need a 75 and I need a 10. So I'll run these through. So again, you put the numbers face down on the cardstock side. Hope that makes sense. So I'll go run these through and I will be right back. I 
I have done this before and it worked out quite well. This time it was a little trickier to get those to line up, but or to get the backings to stay on. Maybe I actually pulled off all of the little smaller backings. That might be what I did the other time. I'll have to test that theory out. And I'll just have to run this through twice because I need both pieces. So just bear with me. Sorry to make you guys wait while I'm off camera and um, die cutting. It's okay, I see somebody saying that you used to color the white. The Sharpie, that's a good idea. I will try that. So I'm just taping these to keep those in place. I'll have to tape them down when I get over to the cutter. So I'll be right back one more time. So if you, I'm just reading Michelle's comment. If you had a Sharpie or blend in whatever color you were trying to put down with dimensionals, you could color the sides in any color that you have blends for. And then that way you would be able to have um, like your dimension to the same color as your project. If you're doing skinny little pieces like this, if you're just doing something else like, you know, popping the flower, you don't need to do that but, um, or dimensionally the flower, um, then you don't need to do that. But um, when it's these skinny little elements like this, I didn't wanna be fussy cutting tiny little black dimensionals to go behind these and I wanted them raised. So that was what I did. I'm not gonna pop the one out for right now because I don't need that one. I need the seven and the five first. Um, so that one is that there. And I shouldn't uh, say her age, but I, I'm sure she's probably not watching. She might be working, but um, anyway, this is going to a special person too. <laughs> they all do, right? Okay, so there is my dimensional 75. And the reason that I had put the solid layer on the back is so that I just had to peel that off. You know what? When I did this earlier, I did it the other way. I and then I had to peel all the little individual ones. This is the edge, that's why it's um, a solid piece. This one is probably, yeah, that one's a whole bunch of little hexagons that I'll have to peel off. I got, I lucked out with the seven that it's from the, uh, the border around here and that's why it's one solid piece, if that makes sense. Got lucky on that one. Okay, does anyone have any questions okay I see a couple of you would watch tomorrow so I'll figure out a time I'll get something made with the new product and um, I'll do a sneak peek of that and then I'll go back to doing some of the retiring product as well not tomorrow but for tomorrow I'll do something with the new product is that your guys vote do something new I am going to also trim down this little happy you could do this by hand as well if you didn't want to use a little cutter. That would work. I might even cut a little closer by hand once I've trimmed it down. New product sounds good. Okay, so I've got the happy, and now I need to snip out that TH. This one I'm going to do with the scissors because I have to snip into that TH anyway. Do any of you guys have this suite? I've had it since I think it was in pre-order. Either that or I got it as soon as it became available because I think it went into, like it was out of stock very early last year because it was so popular. And of course, I haven't had a chance to make anything with it. So this is my first time creating with it. And then it's tempting to not use it because, you know, then I might be able to sell it as brand new, but it was too pretty not to use it. So I decided I would go ahead. 
So I have got the TH, I have got my 75, and I just need to snip down this happy, and I will go a, a bit smaller with it. And I'll just use my snips for that. All right, so there we go. And what do you guys think? Do you think it's fine without the birthday? It gets the message across with just the happy 75th or the happy 50th? I hope so. Okay, so what I did next was I took some tear and tape and gotta find the end first. I like to use tear and tape when I'm attaching something to glitter paper because Sometimes it's hard to get things to stick to glitter paper. I don't know if you guys find that, but I do. So I like to use tear and tape for this. So this is, these are both trimmed to six inches because the paper came as six inches. I just haven't trimmed it to the five and a quarter yet. And I placed it so that the stitched edge would show. And then I just actually need to grab the nice thing about the um, glitter paper is I can actually peel this and straighten it if it goes crooked. If this was card if this was glued to cardstock, I would have ripped that trying to fix that. Okay, so now I need my full size cutter because I can't cut five and a quarter on the little cutter. That is the one drawback to the little cutter. I kind of wish it had a six inch span, but that's okay. So we're going to go, it's about half a scallop on each side. Go a little bit more than five and a quarter because that didn't get enough of a scallop. And then I'll just reverse this over. There we go. I like to make an incomplete scallop on either end. Some people like to have a full scallop on either end. It just depends on what you like. Now, so this is the four by five and a quarter. I chose to put the scallop to the outside so that we would see a little bit more of it, but often I'll turn it the other way as well. So whatever way you want it to go is fine. And for the creative challenge, I'll recap this at the end. But um, thank you guys, both the perfect the way it is. Um, I'll recap at the end, but if you use this layout or even a technique from this card, so either the layout or a technique and then post it in the comments of this project, I'll post this afterwards. Um, Post a photo of your project in the comments of this card and you will be entered in the draw then. So whether you want to do the dimensional die cuts or a die cut where you've kept the negative space or the layout of the card, something like that. And nobody would notice the off balance scallops. <laughs> okay, so now we have this guy here, I need to wrap the twine. That was the other thing. I have white twine and I will not be able to tie this as easily as I did earlier. I'm sure of it. I managed to tie it without a glue dot. If you can even believe that I almost always use a glue dot when I'm tying my bows. And thankfully it worked for me earlier where I didn't have to do that because I knew I needed to slide that bow to a place where it would come out between those leaves. So I tried it and it worked out. I'm going to see if it'll work for me again, but I'm probably going to have to resort to a bow. Wow, it worked, you guys. Can you even believe it? I don't know how I got two of those in one day. <laughs> Sometimes it's a, it's a one-off thing. Ethan did this and you know what? That bow is not, it's twisting on me. Anyhow, saying you get like a one-off thing and never again. Ethan today was trying this. It was like a, I don't know what kind of challenge you call it, but it was one where you put a runner on and then you lay on your back with one foot in the air and you take your other runner and you place the shoe 
on top of the other shoe and you have to fully roll over keeping the shoe on top of the shoe. I got almost all the way around on the first try and then do you think I could finish the task after? I could not do it. He managed it though. He got all the way around. It was impressive. But we were saying how we both almost got it on the first try and then like failed miserably after that. And we're like, ah, oh, it's one of those things where you get it the first try and never again, or almost get it the first try and then never again. I'll have to find the video of the person who posted the challenge and show you guys. It's probably hard to understand. Anyhow, super impressive that he managed it. I could not get it. So now I can go ahead and glue this down. Now that the, um, actually I won't glue it down just yet because if I need to slide that bow, <laughs> that was almost my problem, Sandy. I had to stop. I tried it three times and my hip was locking on me so I couldn't keep trying. Otherwise, I would have. Oh, like that's kind of bad. That it was my hip that kept me from continuing to try. So I said I was going to glue this down now, but I'm recanting that because once I get all of these other little pieces on, I want to, if I need to be able to slide my twine, I want to be able to do that so I'm actually not gonna put it all in place just yet or I'm not gonna glue this down just yet I'll put the things in place first so another thing is um, I kind of offset my die cutting a little bit so I am just going to even it out some with my scissors you could skip this if you don't care if it's a little more even but I did it on the first one too and this is easier than re-stamping if you don't want to have to re-stamp. And I certainly didn't want to. Once you heat emboss something in black, black can be such a staticky color to heat emboss. You do not want to have to redo that if it worked out well. So I did not want to have to redo it. So what I did here is I tucked this in there so that this leaf just rested against the frame behind there and in front and then this part in front here. So I'm going to put some dimensionals behind here to keep that in place and then that way it'll help that all stay together while I'm trying to get it lined up and placed down on the project. Found that something keeping them together so even just attaching those two together like that is enough that now I can put some dimensionals behind here and everything will kind of stay together. So I put a full one in the top and bottom and then now I can just snip some pieces apart here. Do any of you have this fabulous frames I think it's called? I keep calling it the wrong thing. Earlier I think I called it fancy frames and it is actually fabulous frames I want to say the discounts this catalog were crazy um, I was also going to say I counted how many retiring sets I have last night oh my goodness I'll post a photo not tonight um, I haven't taken one yet but I marked all of my retiring sets yesterday it is scary how many I have my family each guessed before I did the count. I guessed to, I was low. I guessed high, but I was low. So I've got that all ready. You have fabulous frames. That is awesome. So before I post the photo, do you guys have any guesses of how many retired sets? So again, before I stick this down, just pull all those backings off. Take a wild guess. It'll be easier to guess when I post the photo. It is very scary how much red there is. I put a little red sticker on um, my retiring sets and yikes, Ethan walked in the room after I had counted and his eyes just about popped out of his head. He's like, whoa. <laughs> He just couldn't believe how many. I can't either, honestly. And the dyes. Oh, I'm very sad about how many dyes are going. Okay. I 
have to place another order for catalogs, but if um, Stamp Club people, I for sure have enough for that. And then I have some more too. So those came and somehow I lucked out. Um, if you guys have ordered catalogs or if you're, if you're a demonstrator and you've ordered catalogs, you cannot expedite an order with catalogs on it. And there must have been a glitch. I didn't even remember that that was a thing that you can't expedite. So I placed my order, added catalogs. It worked and they came. Usually you have to place a separate order. So there must have been a glitch and they let it, somehow it went through. I, and again, I didn't realize that until today I tried to order more because I was expediting an order and um, I couldn't add them. So the first day there must've just been an error. All right, so that's in place. Now I am going to dimensional this little flower. So I just tucked this over the corner here and I placed it so that this little bow would kind of pop up in between the flower and the leaf. It might be too far over this time. I don't know. No, it should be okay to go out right there. I just have to bring the tail up. It, the flower is a little bit fragile. I just don't want to rip the stem. So that's why I'm being a little cautious here. So that's going to go like that. So I have, I need to put a double decker behind the small flower and a single decker behind the big flower. And this big dimensional is also going to help me keep these pieces with the negative space in place so that they don't pop out on me. I'm actually gonna double decker these two little pieces, the two dimensionals here before I stick them behind that flower. I put them on my die cut the first time before I even put it on there, but this time I didn't, so. There we go. Okay, so the flower's in place. I just love the glitter of that pink. I need to remember to hold it the right way for you guys. So I just love the shimmer of that. So now I could go ahead and attach this to the card if I wanted to, because now this is in place. The other thing I could have done, and it would have saved on some twine, is if I had have just taped down these two pieces, like two shorter pieces, taped it behind here and behind here, and then tied a bow around it, then I could slide that bow up and down to wherever I wanted it to. So that would be something I would maybe consider when I'm doing the next card, because again, I still have to do one more. Okay, so I'll take my happy now, and this is going to overlap right here. So I'm actually gonna tuck a little piece of dimensional down in that little hole there, because I don't want I'm going to put this on a dimensional and I don't want it to cave down in between there and otherwise it might. So I just have a tiny little piece of black and looking for my paper piercer here. I am going to just use my piercer to drop that down into that little hole. I feel like I'm playing the game operation. Do you guys remember that game? I saw something with that on Instagram the other day. <laughs> Okay, so now, now I can put a piece of dimensional on the back of here, and I am again going to use my black dimensional. Does anybody, oh, here it is. I was gonna ask you guys if you saw where I put it. Um, so I just need to snip a little piece from around the edge. I love the shimmer too. I'm not sure, Audrey. I actually wondered that. You might even get both. Oh, that would be awesome. Thank you. Okay. I love your guys' guesses about the um, how many sets are retired. Uh, now, I actually realized that I need to place one more. I need to put a dimensional behind this leaf. 
too big. I need a half guy on that one. So I'll just snip that. Um, and I need to do one more little piece on that section there. Okay. Where did my little happy go? <laughs> this is what happens. You put things down. It's probably stuck to me. It's on my wrist. Did any of you see that? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm actually going to just snip part of that off. And then that way I don't have to put another row of dimensional under there. So I'm going to glue dot the end. So I've now edited this a little bit. So there's just dimensional on the right half and I put a glue dot behind there. And then now I can just put this right here like that. Okay, so the happy is, oh, it needs to move over a little bit. Okay, now I can take my 75 and that'll go there. Kind of sticking to my hand. Don't worry about the white that's showing. That will peel off. And then these will go like this. And I kind of like it staggered a little bit. Um, I originally I had it straight. So I'll just show you guys straight if it doesn't stick to my hand. And then I decided that I liked it a little more staggered. It actually fell that way. It did that kind of on its own. And then I was like, oh, I kind of like that. So somebody said a series of happy accidents. I feel like, to my liking anyway, if you guys prefer it straight, you could always do it straight. But um, I just liked it a little bit askew. So I'm gonna put the seven down. This one I lucked out, like I said, and I can just peel that in one. And for the five, I'm not so lucky. I'm gonna have to pull off a bunch of little hexagons. Can you see that? That's the backing of the dimensionals, but I'm going to totally try the coloring the sides. The other thing that I was a little unsure of was that the foam adhesive sheets where you would get a full solid piece, not a bunch of little dimensionals, is that they are thicker. So I didn't want it quite that thick, but it would be worth trying it. And there, there are Sharpies in every color of the rainbow, pretty much. You could get one probably close enough if you didn't have blends. I'm excited to show you guys some of the new things. What do you want to see? I have uh, the In Color ribbon. That I thought I'd show you because it is such a vibrant way to show you those in colors. I really like them at first I wasn't sure but the more I looked at them like I love earthy colors there we go oh that's a little crooked and then I need to just snip another little piece of black dimensional for the TH They're great colors. I feel like it's kind of a retake of something that was out before I was ever a demonstrator. And I'm happy to get to have something similar myself now. Okay, so that is the bulk of it. So we've got the Happy 75th. I'm gonna go ahead and attach this down to the base now, and then I'll put the embellishments in place. So I've used the pink again from the Elegant Faceted Gems. I have not updated today's retiring list. I meant to do that, but um, <laughs> my order actually did not arrive. It was scheduled to arrive today. And of course it was one of those, they were telling us call back in an hour and a half and we will let you know if it's cleared customs. And they said it had cleared customs and call back again and we'll, or it should deliver. It'll, they'll be delivering up until seven o'clock. And I had other appointments and they were on my way home, FedEx was. So I thought, well, I'm going to just stop there because they kept telling us they couldn't get through to the depot. So I went to the depot and it would not have arrived here till Tuesday. So I'm glad that I stopped there. He was able to grab it for me. So I was very grateful. Thanks, Leslie. 
Okay, so now with twine, or not twine, sorry, with um, the tear and tape on there, what is the name of the paper? It is, um, I'll check the official name for you. It's the Abigail Rose Suite. It's on page 57. So let's just check what the name is while I'm peeling these off. Um, it is called Abigail Rose Designer Series Paper. And it's 10% off down to $14.85. I just scrolled past the little happier than you stuff there. I was actually planning on making something with that last night. Janet, you asked me about that DSP today. I actually had it out last night and I was going to try to make something with it then, but there was just too much going on. And then today my plan changed to this, but it is on my my list. I have made tabs in my catalog of the stuff that's retiring that isn't sold out that I really want to make something with. And um, it's one of them. That little bear is so cute. Okay, so this is down there. Margaret, I love this DSP. I haven't trimmed my bow yet, so don't worry about that. Okay, now these are the elegant faceted gems. You get two sizes in each of the three colors. The white are hidden under the flap and there's only two left. You can see I use those a lot. I do have more packages of them. I think now I need to, I ordered one with my retiring order, but I feel like I should probably get more, especially at $4 if they're not sold out. So this time I'm using the pink. I did go back and forth. You can see here, I've pulled these clear ones off a couple times because I went back and forth on what I was gonna use. But I put a large one there and a small one here. Actually, I'm gonna move that a little closer. And then I put another small one over here. I'm gonna actually bring that a little closer. Do you guys ever do that? I know I ask you that every time. I put them down and then I change my mind on where it's gonna go. And this is the part I'm always the most hesitant about, trimming down my twine because I'm always afraid that I'm going to fray it or cut it too short. I will probably come back in and shorten this a little bit more. Um, and that one tail was going a little wonky on me before, so I don't want to trim too much. And then, there we go. So I'll leave that at that. I'm not gonna trim any more off of that. But that is my card. Oh, you know what? I didn't put together the inside. I told you guys I had stuff to put on the inside. So we better do that quickly. So I have a four by five and a quarter. I think I told you that earlier. And then this piece, uh, Margaret, this is also from that DSP, this nice pink striped one. And so I'm gonna put that on here as well. I love when I remember to put an insert and it works out to put a little strip of the coordinating DSP. I don't always remember to. And often I'll only put a liner if it's a dark colored card base, but I have been remembering to do this a little bit lately. So I just put that on the edge and then I can just go in. Now these ones, I often when I give a card, I write on a sticky note so that the recipient can reuse the card. These ones are rather specific. So I think I will end up writing straight into their card base. And I think that both of these people will actually keep their card. Um, you know, some people will reuse them or keep them, but I think that for these occasions, I don't know that they would give them away anyway. So I think it works in this case to, to not write on a sticky note. But I hope you guys like that. I hope that it's given you some ideas on things that you can do in your card making or scrapbooking. So just remember, if you feel like sharing the video from today, I will make something for you with some new product as opposed to sending you these ones because if you're the winner of the sharing draw, if you do share, you have to come back and comment to tell me that you shared because otherwise I don't know for sure who it was. A lot of times it doesn't show us who shared the video. So just share, come back and comment that you shared and then I'll enter you in the draw. I'm going to sh also post a photo of this card. And if you post a photo of your own creation, 
using one of these techniques or this layout. So you have a little bit more freedom in your creativity, get a little bit more creative license this time um, to just come back and post a photo of that and then I'll enter you in the creative challenge draw. So that is the project for today. If you feel like staying here and hanging out, I'm gonna dig into that box and I will share some stuff. And then just a quick recap too, the retiring products or last chance list promotion. If you decide you wanna get in on that and place an order, you can either uh, message me. I will probably try to place one sooner than later. I know I have a couple people that want some things that are on that retiring list and I want more of that glitter paper now. So um, if you want anything added, message me as soon as possible or if you are going to place it yourself you can use this host code here and then you'll get entered in the um sorry not entered you'll qualify for either the free gift with a 65 five dollar order or free gift and class with a 100 dollar order and then the birthday one is still open too so if you would prefer to qualify for that one or if you've already placed an order and you're doing a second one and you want to qualify for the other event um, either just scroll back to find that code or message me for it. All right, so move these aside. And I will first give you a little peek at the cover. I'm allowed to show the cover. I am not allowed to show anything pages from inside. So this is what the cover looks like. It's nice and bright. What do you guys think so far? You've probably seen pictures of this because we were allowed to share photos of it online prior to today. So I'll just show that much and I'll move this out of the way now. If you, I think I'm allowed to give it out already. I'll double check that. But um, if you are around this weekend, let me know. Now I will pull in some in color ribbon. I'll show you first. I think it's so pretty and I think I need to open at least one of them to show you. So I'll start with my Oh, I don't know which is my favorite. I'll show you my favorite three together. I feel like I should show you one at a time, but I really love these three together. Look at those. And then you add in this. I just think these are so pretty. These are the in colors. So I will actually put together an in color club as well. So if anyone is possibly interested in that, how in color club works is you get a color a month for five months and by the end of the five months you've got the ink pad the refill the marker the blends some dsp cardstock and some ribbon and whatever embellishments they are super pretty thank you sandy um so i'll tell you the colors this one is i boho blue this reminds me of bordering blue if anyone was around back then then we have i'm going to lay that one down or I'll try to hold it. Then we have Moody Mauve. Some people say mauve, I say mauve. It's like I say tomato, you say tomato. <laughs> then this one is, gosh, what is the name? Pebbled Path. I think that's a good name for that one. This one is Wild Wheat. That's a good name for that one too. I actually really like that color. I love like a, a yellow in those tones and copper clay I love what they chose for names for these what do you guys think they are definitely not the bright of last year's in colors but I love the like earthy tones of these ones I just feel like I don't know this is like a fall sweater to me oh I love them I'm very excited to play with them. I missed some things on the pre-order list. I don't know how I missed a whole category. So I ordered something that probably wouldn't have been my first choice. Um, but I will, I'll still have fun stamping in color stuff and this coordinates with it. So Cheerful Daisies is what I ordered to go with it. And I'll show you the DSP. So this is the DSP that coordinates. And I love that you can like look at this corner piece here. I think that's so pretty. I can't wait to make something with this one here. So who knows, maybe that's what I'll do on live tomorrow and give away. But we've got this, there's dies of course, and then we'll place that there. And I'll actually just tell you what colors. So this does coordinate with all of those in colors. They're all listed on the back there. 
and then as well as some others. Do you guys want me to open the DSP? They're not in your wheelhouse for colors. Yeah, the blue and the mauve are definitely like these three. I just love them together. And then these three I love for fall stuff. I think those will be very popular in the fall. But for sure, I love these three together. I love blues and greens. I'll uh, watch the comments. Tell me if you guys want me to cut open that pack of paper. I have an extra one as well. So I'll just move these, of course. Okay, let's open it. And then I'll show you the other pack of paper that I have. The other one I'm super excited about. I think it's so cute. Um, I just need to slice this open. I'm kind of crazy about how I like to open my paper. It always has to be with a pet pack, bleh, a pair of snips with a clean cut along the top. <laughs> Are you guys that way? I am going to do a bingo, yay. <laughs> I wanted to do one with the spring one too. And if it's not too late, I still would. Ooh, I don't know. This is my favorite corner, but I think that these elements are nice too. So that's one. That's a busy one. Let's see what's on the back. Oh, I love the back of this one. I agree with these neutrals. I think they're so nice. This one is an easy, I prefer this one, but in the right amount, I think this would be okay. I like that there's kind of, so far, a busy side and a nice calm side. Oh, these are my favorite colors, blue and green. I was just saying that, and these are my favorite tones of blue and green. That's so pretty. This, oh, I think I know what I'm gonna do with this. I have an idea. I've, there's been a product I've been wanting to use and I might just have to use that with it. This is so pretty. This might even make a good bingo. Like if everybody got this paper, do you guys think? That one looked like mustard, which is okay. Ooh, this is pretty. I love these, whoever. So often what they do is they actually have somebody at Stampin' Up! who paints onto canvas, and that's how they come up with this paper. Then they, I think, photograph it, and then they turn it into our DSP. Whoever made these, wow. So pretty. I think there's one more. There we go, ooh. These are really good ones. Jan, whenever I see these, prints of paper it reminds me of you you did that I was talking about it the other day the stamp set that had the girl dancing and then somebody used some of the paper we had years ago to make it look like she was um, dancing on the beach and so whenever we have paper with this wash look to it it always reminds me of you because I think you made those cards too <laughs> I hope you don't mind me mentioning that but they're so pretty I love the blue yeah, I agree with you on that. Okay, so that is that paper. And I have another bundle that I should show you, but there are, I hope you guys can hear me because I'm turned around. There are some gems. So we have some more faceted gems. <laughs> Where do you get them? I was buying these plastic record sleeves. Oh, plastic record sleeves. Yeah, tell me about those. I don't know who said that. Oh, Sandy. Sandy, send me a picture of those, please. Okay, so these are the gems that go with the Daisy DSP. They are really pretty. I wish the colors were listed on this pack. It'll say so in the catalog, but I wish they listed it on the back of the package like they do at the DSP. And then I have the In Color 6x6 DSP. So we'll flip through. I love polka dots. This is neat too, actually. And I like stripes, especially diagonal stripes. These ones, when you see it flipped over, they're a little thicker than what I would normally go for, but I like that. And the hearts are okay, but I love the polka dots. So that is this year's DSP prints. So that's those. And then I'm super excited to show you guys this one. This one is called, I can't remember, somebody on the team was so excited about this. Amy, Amy, I don't know if you're here, <laughs> but Zoo Crew, look at this. 
This is so very cute. I'll open this and show you guys. So there's this stamp set to coordinate and then there's dies as well. I haven't pulled the dies out yet. I feel bad whenever I turn around here because um, I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. I heard part of one of my own lives back and I was like, wow, every time I move away, it's very quiet. So I, I wanna find the dies that go with that one. And I'm super excited for the stuff that I ordered today that I had missed that um, I don't know when it will get here between Good Friday and Easter Monday. I know, Maria, it's so cute. There are so many animals that left. And as I was putting stickers on them all yesterday, I was so sad. And I'm glad that I ended up ordering this one. They're adorable. So this is the Zany Zoo. Oh, it's Zany Zoo. So the, the suite is called Zoo Crew, and then the bundle is called Zany Zoo. Oh my gosh. So you even get the little curtain. So these are super cute. There's a couple little trees. There's flowers. There's a balloon. More balloons. Cloud. So you do get a bunch of extra little elements with this one. And then you've got the ones that cut out the little characters as well. And then they'll, they will probably also coordinate with now, it would be sweet if there was a die that cut that guy out. He is adorable. He, she. So let's cut this open. I'm sure you guys want to see this, too. I know I do. And I'm super curious about those record um, sleeves. I keep each package on its own little shelf in a organizer, like one of those inserts for the calyx unit but I like the package staying nice and crisp as anal as that is the ballerina they're so cute oh my gosh this paper I just like it's so adorable look at that I love that it's already colored too this reminds me of you guys know I've been obsessed with playing in the rain and so has Linda. Linda's made so many nice projects with it. I feel like this is like that. I kind of wish they were embossed like playing in the rain, but that's okay. Ah, there's another one that's colored. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I hope you guys are still here watching because this paper, oh. Okay, I will have to flip over and show you guys the other side because there is uh, black and white on the other side. Look at these. Oh, there's sloths. My acupuncturist son loves sloths. These are so cute. Oh my goodness. Look at the beaver and the little frog. Ah, and the bear. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. Even if you just get the DSP, this is, um, like beyond adorable oh the ballerina sandy this is what you were talking about oh look at them all okay i didn't even clue in that each page seems to be a theme wow i'm not always super swift but they are so cute look at them all and then this one oh Look at that. This is like the cutest paper ever. Even again, if you don't get the stamp set, this paper is so cute. I feel like you could do a little alphabet board or something like that. If you die cut the alphabet a la mode, like a black and then made it look like, you know, blocks, like how you have like alphabet blocks, you could probably do like a little character and then the letter to go with it. I think that would be super fun. Janet, your little grandson would probably, that would be fun to make for him. These are adorable. I can't, this paper is going to be very popular, I think. I'm surprised that it is even still available to order. I'll show you guys the back side too, because there is a nice black and white, or mostly, yeah, I think they're all black and white. So we'll flip these over. Look at that guy with the camera. Okay, before I flip it over, I have to have a squirrel moment and draw attention to these. Look at that skunk and the little pig and the little beaver. And this guy, is that armadillo? Is that what that is? I'm not very great with animal names, but
but so cute. Okay, so there are tiny little flowers in black and white, and those coordinate with the elements here. Then we've got these little dashes. Okay, I feel like this paper was worth this whole order. <laughs> these cute little polka dots. That one's a little bit hard on the eyes, sorry about that. These scallops. Before I flip this one over, check that elephant out and the koala bear. It's adorable. And then that stars. And then some nice chevrons. So there's three mostly white patterns or white background patterns, three black background patterns. And then you get all of this. This paper is so stinking cute. What do you guys think? I think that you could probably even use these for people that are not just children. <laughs> I think they're cute enough. Super adorable. So that is, let's see what the name of the DSP is. The name of the DSP is Zoo Crew. So it's named the same thing as the suite and then the bundle is named Zany Zoo. I have one other pack of DSP which I can show you guys as well. Thanks for joining Michelle. Um, I did not get the coordinating product for this one. I had to like draw the line somewhere. And then of course, you know, I found those other bundles, <laughs> but we'll order or order. We'll open this one pack too. If you guys are like me and love the blue, this will coordinate with, um, I think that boho blue. Yes. Balmy blue, boho blue, misty moonlight, night of Navy. So if you heard me say misty moonlight and you have not seen what colors are returning, you will now know that that's one of them. So let's take a look. I am super excited about that. Misty Moonlight was one of my favorites. Uh, you had yourself convinced you didn't need anything? Oh no. <laughs> yes, this paper, look at that. And this other one, look at it. It's got little bunnies in there. And then these nice stripes. That one looks like wallpaper. It might actually be called cottage wallpaper. No, countryside inn. I don't know why I thought cottage wallpaper. And then this one has birds. I love that stripe. That one would be really good for masculine stuff too. And then we have this one. More stripes. I feel like it's wallpaper. That's why I thought it was called something wallpaper. I, like, does that not look like those are wallpaper? Like you could have your chair rail and then some wallpaper above it. That's how I feel. Oh, this one has foxes. Look at, the, I love this one. And then flowers. This paper is very cute. This is why I had to add this one even though I didn't get the coordinating bundles because the DSP was just, it's blue and the prints looked really nice. So there we go. That is, it is totally guy side, girl side. I agree with you. I like this one. It's very nice as well. So which is your favorite DSP everyone? The Daisies, Countryside Inn, or Zoo Crew? Tell me which one you guys love the most. Um, yeah, it's hard to decide. I think that's all I will dig out today. It's mostly just other in color products. I will make something and come back tomorrow with some new product for you guys to show you. So again, if you decide to zoo crew, yeah, if you decide to share the video, just make sure that you come back and comment saying shared so that I can count you in the draw. I will leave them open till next week. The zoo crew, totally, it is. If you feel like you need to have these things right away and you decide to join, you can always put um, pre-order product in a starter kit. So when people join, you pay $135 and then you choose $165 worth of product. You can choose that of anything you want. It can be clearance rack, it can be pre-order stuff, it can be current catalog product. So if that's something that interests any of you, I know some people have totally done that. They're afraid that the item will sell out by the time it 
gets to the catalog launch and they want it, then they'll have to wait for it to come off back order. So some people will um, choose to do that so that they can get in on that um, new catalog product as soon as possible and not have to wait till it goes live to everyone. So any of the things we have access to now as pre-order, somebody who chooses to join right now can get that in their starter kit or they can always join and then place an order and get it. So that's the project. I'll post the photo of this version here with the 50. I took the picture before I went live. So I'll post that and then you can post your projects up until next Friday. And then this weekend, either tonight or tomorrow, next couple days, I'll go back and catch up on the past draws from my last few lives. So yeah. Thank you guys all so much for joining me tonight. It was very last minute, but um, I had made this today and Janet and I were talking about going live and we were just busy with appointments. I thought, oh, is it too late to announce it? But I'm glad so many of you could join in with me and uh, watch me make this one. And now I have an extra one made so that I can uh, send it off in the mail. So I'll be back again tomorrow. I will get my project made and then I'll post what time it will be. So just stay tuned and I'll um, post what time. I will get to go live for you guys and we'll do something with in colors. All right, well have a good evening everyone and I will see you again tomorrow. Thanks again for joining.